This is Jonathan Angel here for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to be joined by unbeaten welterweight Michael McKinson. Uh, Michael, how's how's uh, lockdown been? How's uh, the last sort of three months been? Uh, it's been long. It's been long. I was in I was in camp at the beginning of the lockdown. I wasn't meant to fight in the middle of April, so I it was like two three weeks before I was supposed to fight. So it wasn't great timing for me. Um, but yeah, this lockdown, I've used it, the first bit as like a bit of rest time and um, just, just running really, that's all I could do. Um, and then I've, I've been back boxing training the last few weeks now. Um, so just getting back, just getting fit again, uh, ready to call out some names soon. Yeah, I mean, I remember you went to fight Louis Green um, in on one of the MTK shows. Um, was it a frustrating period when that sort of got cancelled? I guess yeah. nothing you could do about it. Everything else got cancelled, but still, nonetheless, frustrating. Yeah, to be fair, the offer, the, the Louis Green offer, there was nobody else. I wanted a bigger name than Louis Green at the beginning. Um, he didn't really bring any worth to that fight, but um, I was putting it to a bit of a corner. There was no, obviously, I'm really avoided in the UK. So we thought, you know what, we'll take Louis Green. He's ranked fourth at the time. I'm third. So that's something to go by. Um, I was way confident I'd beat him quite comfortably. Uh, but so so that wasn't like exactly a fight that I wanted to boost my career on, but his ranking would have boosted me on a bit. So we took that fight. Um, and then well, obviously since the lockdowns happened, he's dropped in the British rankings quite a bit. So, so like now that fight brings no worth whatsoever to me, you know. I'm like I'm. I've always said I'm like a young fighter, but I'm 26 now. I was 26 the other month, so I can't keep saying I'm a young fighter. If I like, if I want to push on and achieve what I want to achieve in boxing, I need to start making big moves now. And the likes of Louis Green and and them sort of names are not what I need to boost my career on. I need the big names. I need to be calling out the big boys. We'll get on to the um, the British rivals, um, who I know you're going to call out in a minute. But um, before that, I wanted to know, sort of, how did you sort of get into boxing? As, as we mentioned off camera, uh, you're from Portsmouth. Um, there's a few people coming through. What were your sort of routes into boxing? Was it always boxing for you? So my dad is Michael Ballingall. He's a professional trainer um, and he manages fighters also. Um, so I was in the gym quite from an early age. I was going to pro shows from him from with him from like the age of five, six years old. I was always going to be a boxer. You know what I mean? It, it, like it's like the family business. So um, I was starting to go to the gym from probably the age of six with my dad because he had a few amateur fights and he was also training fighters at the time. Um, so I was known around Portsmouth like from a very young age. As soon as I was old, as soon as I was old enough to compete, I was competing, you know. As soon as I was old enough to turn pro, that was the only thing I was ever going to do. Um, so it's probably the only thing I'm good at. Uh, but And also my younger brother's a professional boxer as well. So we both grew up in boxing. We've, we've done boxing as long as we could remember. I mean, when you're from sort of a town like Portsmouth, um, sort of coastal town, there's often like not so many fighters. So is it... Is it um, I don't know what the word is. Is it, is it kind of an honour being sort of, you know, one of the few boxers from Portsmouth? As you say, I'm sure, like, your fan base must be massive. Yeah. Um, I'm currently on the number one fighter from this area. I've, I've held a few bouts now. There's quite a, quite a lot of talent coming through. Um, so hopefully they can, they can, like, achieve big things for the city as well. So it's only a small city. Um, but I am flying the flag at the time, and, like, at the moment, and... The, the football club's getting behind me and anyone knows Portsmouth, they've got amazing football fans, you know, and my fan base is developing from, from that club as well. So um, I'm, I'm very proud to be the front runner for Portsmouth Boxing. Is that a dream of yours uh, to one day fight at Fratton Park in front of those crazy Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a Portsmouth fan. Uh, I know a few of the players now and I was invited onto the pitch last year. Um, that is probably my ultimate dream in boxing to to be able to headline a show on Fratton Park and make history. Um, that is one of my goals I want to do in boxing, and, I, and it's a possibility, you know. Like it, it can happen as long as I can stay focused, keep working hard, 
keep achieving like things and like it will happen sooner or later because everyone knows that's what I want to do. Have you had any conversations sort of with the football club about this? I know a few people that have had conversations with the football club. They're open to the idea. Obviously, um, it needs to be worth it. So, so like, if I keep winning and I my worth goes up, then why not? Why not, like, make that happen? Yeah, it would be an unbelievable atmosphere, that's for sure. Um, yeah. When, sort of, you were growing up, did you have any, sort of, boxers that you, sort of, looked up to and watched? Yeah, I, I remember... From the age of like, as long as I remember, I had Prince Nassim videos um, on, on videos as well. So, there, Prince Nassim's the reason I love boxing. Uh, and then, as I've got a bit older, I started to learn a bit more about other fighters. And it, it's, and like, I love Sugar Ray Leonard, he's one of my favorites of all time. Pernell Whitaker, he's one of my favorites of all time, you know. But Prince Nassim's the reason I, I, I box, I think. Mm. Um. I do want to get into sort of uh, your career. Obviously, I find it quite interesting when fighters don't always go down the traditional route. You've obviously gone sort of WBC international. You're now WBO European, um, as is sort of Danny Dignam when you look at sort of the middleweight division. What was sort of the reason you took that path? Was it simply you couldn't get the names you wanted at British level or do you wanted to improve your world ranking? Yeah, when I was... Well, I'll start coming up. I didn't sell tickets at all. Well, luckily, I had some sponsors that managed to help me and they believed in me. But I wasn't a massive ticket seller at the beginning. Like, out of my first 10 pro fights, I only ever got paid once. So, I, and I knew if, like, if I wanted to go the traditional route or get opportunities, I'd have to be a, like, a ticket seller. So like, I'd, we just thought whatever opportunities come first, we'll take. And then I've got the, the opportunity to fight for on my 11th fight for the WBC youth against an unbeaten fighter. And we fought him away um, and we beat him with ease, Ryan Martin. Um, and then it went on from there. That's when we sort of went the WBC route because after that followed on the WBC International Silver. And I, I managed to fight at like a, a domestic like legend really in Colin Lyons. He was two time uh, British champion. Um, European champion, so I, I was. Um, that's when I won the WBC international silver, and then I signed with MTK. And the next opportunity that came was the WBO European because I was ranked for the WBO. So it ain't a bad thing that I didn't go the traditional route because I've bypassed all of that now. Um, there are there's little fighters in Britain that do want to fight me. No fighters call my name except one fighter, but he's not even worth talking about, he's really low down in the rankings. But um yeah, like I have to go the harder route because nobody wants to fight me, do you know what I mean? But I don't mind. I have I've managed to do that that the hard way and it, it's paid off so far. Mm. Um I mean touching on the British scene at the moment, let's go through it. So you've got Chris Jenkins, British and Commonwealth champion, Connor Ben uh holds the WBA Continental You've got Josh Kelly, uh, Chris Congo, Luther Clay, Anthony Tomlinson. Um, there's met several more. Um, have you held any talks with any of them about fighting you? Because it does seem um, that you know you don't often get called out, as you as you mentioned. I mean, some fighters just generally don't call out other fighters. But what are the reasons these fights haven't materialised from your perspective? If you notice, like in that sort of names of fighters that you've just given, when they're getting interviewed, they always mention each other, but they don't mention me. And I'm ranked higher than all of them names except Josh Kelly. They don't mention me for a reason because they know I'm I'm an awkward southpaw. I'm a very smart fighter, and I'll probably like box the ears off of, off them all. Um, and they know that as well, and they're not silly. They don't, they know not to mention my name. It's very frustrating for me. Um, I've I've sparred Josh Kelly a few times. I've sparred Luther Clay a lot of times. I've sparred Chris Congo as well. Um, I've made it. Ve I've been very vocal on social media and calling them guys out. Chris Jenkins as well. Um, and I've just had nothing back. You know, like they're all shook. They like I'm avoided like the plague in British boxing. I believe, and it, it's. I'm starting to get impatient. I'm starting to get frustrated as well. Um, like they they want to talk about fighting each other, but they don't want to talk about fighting me. 
out of those out of those fighters, which which name do you want to say the most, and which one do you believe is sort of the most likely to happen, if any? I believe the winner of Lufa Clay and Chris Congo is the most likely to happen because obviously Lufa's got the WBO Global, so me and him are the only British fighters that are ranked by the WBO. But I believe there's more chance of fighting Chris Congo than Lufa Clay because I've sparred him that many times. And he, like I think Chris Congo is more likely to take the fight than Lufa Clay. Um, so hopefully I'll just sit back and see what happens in that fight. Um, but the name I've called out for over three years is obviously Connor Ben. Like I can't walk in my town centre. I can't go to, I can't go anywhere in Portsmouth and like interact with people and then not mentioning Connor Ben. Do you know what I mean? I've met him. I've called him out a lot of times. His team clearly don't want the fight. Um, there's no disrespect to Connor. He'd probably fight me himself. He's a fighter, isn't he? But um, he's well looked after. He don't want the fight. And obviously, Josh Kelly, he's the only one that's actually talking about bigger names. So like, He's talking about way bigger names than me. And he's obviously got the David Evanesian and, and people like that. So I think the most likely one, Chris Jenkins. I've been on social media like the last couple of weeks trying to get Chris Jenkins. And he's not biting. He's not having none of it. He's trying to go get the Conor Ben fight. So where does that leave me? Do you know what I mean? They're the, the them five names are the, the names that are the only ones worth talking about for me, like in Britain anyway. And they're all looking unlikely unless I hold off and wait for the winner of um, Luther Clay and Chris Congo. Mm. I mean, as you say, you're unbeaten. Uh, you hold the WBO European. You've got a good ranking with the WBO. But is it is it just a case you want these sort of domestic fights um, to sort of you know not legacy defining but you know to have those domestic dust ups that you know the the British public want to see? Yeah, I feel like I need to go over um, and beat up one of Eddie Hearn's lads to be taken serious, or or, or Frank Warren's lads. You know, uh, he's got Jenkins and Hearn's got the rest. But I feel like I need if I want to push on and do big things in boxing, I need to get noticed by them big promoters first. Um, and so that's why I think, even just one one of them names, if I can just go beat up one of them names, then the limelight's on me. And uh, and then then I can move on and start taking over the world. Hmm. Um, what is your promotional situation at the moment? I know you're signed with uh, MTK Global. Uh, has there been any discussions about a promotional contract? Um, yeah, so they, they do do both really. Obviously, I headline MTK shows. Um, I'm managed by MTKs, and obviously, I've got got some good opportunities with them, you know. Um, but the, like the opportunities that I want now, like MTK is a great management team, and like like if anything's going to happen, they're going to be able to get me these opportunities, you know. It's just a matter of time. Um, but I am getting impatient. I am getting frustrated. Um, I'm 26 now. Like, I don't want to be waiting until I'm 30 to be able to get an opportunity. I've been a pro since I was 20 years old. So, um, so yeah, hopefully sooner the better they can deliver and get me some big opportunities and people stop running from me, uh, people stop ignoring me, and then, and then I can prove my worth. Should you not get any of the names you mentioned? Um, as I've said, you've got a high ranking with the WBO. Um, would you sort of pursue maybe uh, a name abroad? I mean, in the welterweight division, there are some fantastic names, especially when you sort of look towards sort of the world and elite level. But is that would you would you target that, or are there any names in mind sort of um, uh, worldwide? Of course, I would. I'd love to like um, take on them names as well, as long as like it benefits my career and it's not relatively un unknown fighters, because obviously I've my last two opponents have been, they've been international fighters, but they've been an unknown Russian um, and a relatively unknown Argentinian. Like the Argentinian had a really high ranking, so it was worth it, you know? So if these international fighters bring worth then and it benefits my career, then definitely let's have it, you know? I'm, I'm in this game to change my life, change my daughter's life, change my family's life, you know, and achieve big things for my city. 
So I don't want to be hanging around at this level. Like the, the guys I've been beating, I've been beaten with ease, very, very clear. Just because I haven't been knocking them out, I've been embarrassing them, I've been showing them up, I've been absolutely schooling them. So why keep me at this level? I'm ready to push on and take over the world. Mm. Um, I think MTK did mention or uh, they've got some dates uh, planned for this summer. Are you uh, hopeful of getting on, on one of those shows? I got um, the only offer that I got wasn't really worth my career. It, like, it, it wouldn't benefit me. So I've decided to hold out and wait for a, something that's actually going to benefit me. You know, And like, since I've been a pro, I've never, ever turned down anything. Every phone call I've got, I haven't even asked questions. I've said, yes, let's do it. But I'm at a stage of my career now, I've got to start thinking about my career especially if I want to go places in boxing, you know? So, um, so mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I just want to hold out for the time being to make sure something better comes along. What is the sort of time frame if you were to face a domestic opponent? I know you mentioned uh, the winner of Clay and Congo, which is set to be in uh, the matchroom fight camp. Um, if you were to face anyone else, is there sort of a time frame that, you know, you need these fights to be sort of done and over the line? Because as we know, Frank Warren's coming back in a few weeks' time. Eddie Hearn is set to come back in a few weeks' time. Is there sort of a, a time frame needed? At the moment, uh, probably give me eight weeks and I'll be ready to fight anyone. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm back in the gym now, so who knows where I'll, where I'll be in like four weeks' time or whatever. Um, I'm back sparring now. It won't, I won't need long. I haven't weighed myself yet, but I'm not mega heavy. I'm not mega heavy. Uh, so we, we've just seen it. But from right now, eight weeks, anything more than eight weeks, brilliant. Um, I do want to just get your opinion on sort of the elite level. There's obviously always talk of a uh, big clash between Spence and Crawford. What's your opinion on that, Mikey? They're, they're the two dons at the lightweights. Um, I think Crawford beat Spence. Um, I think he's a phenomenal fighter. Um, they both fight, like, but I just think Crawford has the edge. And um, there's also been talk of a clash between Crawford and Pacquiao. Um, Pacquiao still still going, um, yeah. unbelievable champion. What do you first of all make of how Manny Pacquiao sort of continued his career, and how would you see that fight going? I think now, I think now he's like. He's had a lot of fights. He's had a lot of miles in boxing. Uh, I think Crawford probably has the edge over Pacquiao as well. I'd rank the welterweights. I'd rank the welterweights. Crawford, Spence, Porter, then probably Pacquiao now. Um, he's still still pulling off good wins, obviously beating Thurman and, and, and things like that. But I just think these young fighters like Crawford's and the Spences, I think they, they are going to take over now. Hmm. And um, final one, uh, Fury and Joshua, uh, obviously, is the talk of the nation right now. Two fights agree for 2021. Um, what's your feelings right now as we speak on that fight? Fury is the number one heavyweight. He's the Don, the Gypsy King. He, he's, he's my favourite sportsman there is, uh, Tyson Fury. I think he, he's the number one heavyweight on the planet. He beats... He beats if they have the third fight, he knocks Wilder out again. He beats Joshua even easier, you know. But obviously, um, we don't know. He might have to fight White beforehand uh, and things like that. So hopefully, like they both win their fights before, and and they Britain can have that big fight next year because it's so, going to be amazing. Absolutely. So in your opinion, Fury um, knocks out Joshua quicker than he did Wilder. Um. I don't know. Wilder's probably a little bit easier to hit. Um, but I think Fury completely schools Joshua. Like, very, very easy. Uh, I think Wilder's a bit more dangerous than um, Joshua. But obviously, you see what Fury managed to do to Wilder last time. So, I just think Fury comes out on top either way with any of them fighters. Um, any of the heavyweights, that is. Uh, no problem. Easy. Fair enough. Michael McKinson, thanks very much uh, for coming on and speaking to me. Um, any last messages to sort of your British rivals before we, before we finish? Yeah, stop ignoring Michael McKinson. I'm here. I'm ranked higher than all of you. I'll, 
I'll fight any single one of you uh, ones that of worth mentioning in this in this uh, interview. Just make sure you acknowledge me, stop ignoring me, and give me an offer. There you have it, uh, Michael. Thanks very much for coming on, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up quite soon. Brilliant. Thank you very much.